Hi everyone, it's Emmanuel Kadosh. I wanted to invite you all to subscribe to ILTV Plus, where you can find our daily news and updates about Israel. And not only that, but live feeds, entertainment, our kosher food show, and so much more. Needless to say, your subscription to ILTV Plus helps us grow and create more content while also supporting the state of Israel. Our app is available on all platforms and devices, so I'll see you guys there. Hello and welcome to ILTV's Israel Daily. I'm Aaron Porras and coming up in today's newscast, Israeli police on the hunt after an Israeli man was stabbed and severely injured in a suspected terror attack early Tuesday morning. Meanwhile, the ballistics test results are out, but nothing is resolved. So will we ever conclusively know who killed Palestinian-American journalist Shirin Abu Akleh? And finally, the world's youngest professional mentalist coming to the ILTV studios. But what will Nevo Abutbul reveal this time? Israeli police still searching across the country today for the latest terror suspect in Israel and this after the suspect fleeing on foot following his early morning attack. A 47-year-old ultra-Orthodox Jewish Israeli man seriously injured Tuesday after he was stabbed between the cities of Bnei Brak and Givat Shmuel at around 5 o'clock in the morning. The victim rushed to hospital in nearby Ramat Gan presenting with multiple fractures to his skull and speaking with Israeli media, the victim's wife saying, my husband went to pray in Givat Shmuel and said that when he got onto the cross bridge, a man with an Arab appearance came in front of him, removed something from a bag and inflicted strong blows to his head. Thankfully though, the victim is now said to be in severe but stable condition. The suspected terrorist attacker on the other hand, still on the run and police launching a manhunt for the stabber who reportedly fled after the attack across the pedestrian bridge over route four. He's described as a bald and bearded man wearing a black shirt, blue jeans, and flip-flops. The story is still developing. Now, Americans are again reeling in the wake of yet another mass shooting tragedy, and this time, during a July 4th Independence Day parade in the Chicago suburb of Highland Park. The following visuals may be disturbing for some viewers. <laughs> Hundreds, if not thousands, sent running for cover as an Independence Day parade in Chicago turns into a nightmare. Yet another mass shooting event in which civilians seemingly targeted at random. The shooter opening sporadic fire from a rooftop over the parade using a high-powered rifle and sending the crowds into a pandemonious effort to flee. We started shooting again and we ran behind the building and I put my, my son in a dumpster and um, he sit there with his dog and uh, I went back to look for the rest of my family. I left him with someone there so that I can go back to get my phone and find the rest of my family. It was just horrible. Uh, I went back, there was a few people shot on the ground. and. There was a little boy that was in somebody's, one of the police officers' arms, and that's, uh, that was the worst experience ever because, you know, all I thought about was my son, and I can only imagine what that family's going through. At least 36 people reportedly injured in the shooting spree, mostly by gunshots, and six people killed, including two elderly Jews, one of whom a longtime senior staffer at a nearby synagogue. The 22-year-old suspect, meanwhile, who had shared photos and drawings of himself in classrooms with bullets and in the streets with guns, captured after an hours-long manhunt. But his motive remaining unclear, including whether or not he was at any time targeting any specific group or races in the crowds. Police saying it appeared random. In any case, Prime Minister Yair Lapid sending condolences to the American people, saying that today, as always, Israel stands with our American friends. In other news, the joint U.S.-Israeli investigation into the killing of Shirin Abu Akleh now concluding its ballistics test, and the United States admitting that the evidence available seems to implicate the IDF, but that the results are unfortunately inconclusive. This, however, is of course not enough for those seeking Israel's condemnation. Joining me to discuss is firearms examiner and crime scene investigator Lior Nadivi. 
Neil, thank you so much for being with us. Now, you're also a retired police officer with the Forensic Science Division. Can you describe the process uh, of a ballistic test? To watch full episodes of ILTV's Israel Daily and tons of other content from Israel, visit our website at ILTV.tv or download the ILTV Plus app.